All right, we're going to study a little bit more of this today. We've been studying some in the book of John, and we want to continue to study there a little bit more. And if you would, turn your Bible to the chapter 13, verse 31 of the book of John. Uh, this is a, a what I would like to, to try to get across this morning is the, uh, the forgiveness, the, the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ, and how that... Uh, uh, how he uh, talked to Peter after what he had, uh, Peter had said. So this is the lead in in, in, uh, in verse uh, 13. Uh, in the latter part of 12, Jesus was asked them about, Know ye not what I've done? And talk, of course, he was talking about the foot washing. Then he says, You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought to also wash one another's feet. And this was this was brought out in, in uh, the service last Sunday, but I, and I'm not trying to do anything. I just want to bring this in to you, bring it up to. And then, and and I uh, in verse 15, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that is sent that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So now we look, I want to look at this right here. Then in verse uh, verse 18, he says, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but the, that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you, before it comes, that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus, had thus said, had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we knew, we know from this reading, and, and I would like to say this morning, uh, what I what I try to say, I try to say it because. I feel like it's what the Lord would have me to say. But if I say if I say anything that is wrong, I ask the Lord to forgive me. But I know this, as Brother Larry has already mentioned, his word will not return void. Right. What I read is true. What I say, you you pray for me. And so here he says here, then his uh, in verse uh, uh, 22, he says, then the disciples looked, uh, one on another, doubting of whom he spake, I, and I, I'm, I'm going. I want to get on over into uh, down to verse 36. Now, notice here. Uh, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, wilt thou go us? Will will willst go us thou? And Jesus answered him, Whether I go, thou cannot follow me. Now, <clears throat> if you'll check, if you'll read and study your scriptures. You notice there was a lot of times that Jesus said unto them, come follow me, mm -hmm. come follow me, come follow me. Now he's saying to Peter, Peter, you can't follow me now. And listen, this is a, this is a, this is a situation where that Peter, Peter was upset. Peter didn't, Peter just didn't know what was going on really. And yet he had an inkling that Jesus was talking about his death. But we notice in uh, uh, the uh, 30, uh, in the latter part of 36, he says, But thou shalt follow me afterward. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? And of course, I, as I mentioned a while ago, the Lord had said unto these his disciples, and he called them and he said, Follow me. One time he said, I'll make you fishers of men and other things of this nature. But uh, he said, Now you can't follow me. And listen, there's, there's times in our life, people, this morning I have... Uh, I understand there's times in my life when I'm trying to study God's Word that it's just as sweet as it can be. Amen. It's, it's wonderful. I go right back to the same scriptures the next day and I say, I'm going to, that's what, that's what I believe I'm going to teach. And I said, I'll just study that a little bit. And it's just as blank. And I said, Lord, where is it at? What, what was I reading yesterday? And it's the same way here with Peter. Peter says, now, you, you know, I followed you and I've done these things for you. And, and it, it, it's, it's the same way in our lives. 
sometimes everything is just it's just uh, sugar and cream. Everything is going well. We feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can uh, we can teach a lesson. We can sing songs of praise to Him, and everything's good. Then, for some reason or another, and God knows, we get up and we try to sing a song, and it sounds like every note is sour. Uh, you try to read the scripture, and it, it just there's just nothing that comes in. It's just there. And sometimes, you know, you feel like taking your Bible and closing it up and saying, I'll do it another day. Mm -hmm. But listen, that's not the way to do it. Right. That's not the way. That's not what God is wanting you to do. He's wanting you to appreciate what He has done for you. Amen. That day when all that, that, that scripture and that song singing was so sweet and mellow, He wants you... He wants you to remember those things. He wants you to remember His Son, Jesus Christ, what He did for you. And He wants you to appreciate something. And we get to the point sometimes that we just don't appreciate God like we should. Right. And people, we get sour. We get in the flesh. We get in the wrong way. And this is the way that God has of tuning our tuner and getting us back like we should be. And this is the same thing that happened to Peter here. He says... And Peter said unto him, Lord, in verse 37, Why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. And Peter meant it. Peter meant this with all his heart. And, and Peter, was, Peter was upset, but Peter meant this. And we, if you'll go on just a little bit more with them, uh, and, and you'll see that Peter took a stand for the Lord. Amen. Because he took that sword out. And he whacked that man's ear off. And listen, I don't know, the Bible don't say if he, was, if he missed his head or if he did the ear intentionally. But listen, he was, he was, he was ready to die. Mm -hmm. He was ready to fight. And of course, you know, the Lord said, no, don't do that, Peter. Would you permit me from doing what I've got to do? And he healed the man's ear. But here, he, and Jesus, in verse 38, Jesus answered him, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Right. In other words, that old rooster down there is not going to crow until it's just about daylight. But before that daylight, you're going to deny me three times. And we read it in every one of the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's there for that he denied the Christ. But you think about this this morning. That old rooster sits there all night long. And he don't crow or he don't do anything. But just about the time that that sun is going to start peeking up, he starts crowing. Right. Letting everybody know, hey, daylight is coming. Well, listen. This is the thing that, that Jesus was trying, I believe Jesus was trying to get across to Peter, and it, it should be to us too. Listen, it's always darkest. It's always darkest before day. Amen. And, 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 and he, that old rooster sits there and he waits until he sees that little, just a little flicker. And that's the way we should be, people. We should be, we should be ready at all times to crawl our heart out to the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to, to tell other people about his saving grace and to exalt his precious name. Amen. And that's what that's why this morning that I believe here that Jesus told Peter these things and he says he, that you're going to deny me. Then he comes back at Peter again. And he's talking to Peter. No doubt in my mind he's talking to Peter. But he said let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. Of course, I've said this to you. Don't you get troubled about this. Because he says, this has got to be done to fulfill the scriptures. Right. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And Peter believed in God. And I believe he believed in Jesus Christ with all my heart. But here, here we get this comfort from the Lord Jesus Christ, even in our uh, episodes with the world and what we go through with when the, the, those old dark days come and when those uh, older years come and, and all of these things. Listen, 
He's always there to encourage us. Even Amen. Though, even though it may it may look bad, it may look dark, He's always there to encourage us, and we would surely, surely don't need to fold our Bible and say, I give up. Hmm. I quit. Lord, right. you, you're, yeah. you've left me. I, you don't need to do that, people. Just be encouraged because, listen, He's trying to get something across to you. Hey, you remember, you remember when I said, let not your heart be troubled. You remember when those days come and when everything was just so perfect. You remember when you prayed for that sick person and I lifted that sick person up. You remember these things because these dark times are going to come. Right. And 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 listen, uh, it's sometimes it it, it, it just my nearly is old saying it takes the skin. But listen, you will get through it. That's it. And the Lord will help you through these things. And just be content and, and trust Him and everything will be all right. But don't fall out with God and say, well, you know, you're not doing me right. Because He, he knows all things. Amen. He knows what you need. And listen, this morning, when you have a dark time in your life, you need it. You need it. And the old flesh said, oh, no, it's a gloomy, so I'll just quit. But listen, you need it to appreciate what the Lord has already done for you. And listen, what He will do for you, because He has promised you a home in heaven. He's promised you a time where that there will be no pain, no, no dying, nothing there. You'll be with Him in heaven. And so He said to Peter, He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now notice here He says, in my Father's house are many mansions. Now, I don't understand all I know about this because he said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. Now, I think probably what Jesus had in mind, the mansions were for the, the bride of Christ, of, of God, and he's going to go prepare a, a, a mansion or for his own bride. But I believe also that he's telling Peter, listen, I'm going to prepare a way that when I go, you can follow me. The way has not been prepared yet because there's no man has done this thing. There's no man been killed, died for the sins of the world, resurrected and ascended to the Father. None. Right. You say about Abraham, no. Abraham and all of them went down to Abraham's bosom. But Jesus is going in the presence of the Father and he is going to a place that atonement blood on the mercy seat and it will please the Father. And he says, this is the way, Peter. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to prepare a way for you and for all of those that will follow me. Amen. So he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Hey, things are, things are going to be brighter. But now he says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And, and, and he's, he's glorifying the Father. He's telling him what a glorious place it is. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you, Peter, and for all that will follow me. And he says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Mm -hmm. Now this again, hey, this should wipe that gloom that we have sometimes to put up with, it should take care of it. It should mm -hmm. wipe it away. It should be just like a windshield wiper on a, a rainy windshield. Hey, listen, it should clean it away where that you can see, hey, he's coming back. Amen. And all we got to do is just be patient and got to wait and serve him. And the, the time will come when the rain will stop, the window will be clean, and we'll, we'll see the Father and all will be well. And he, he wants us to understand that because he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. And he said, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. So Peter up here said, Peter uh, in 37 says, Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thee. In other words, I'll die for you. Amen. So the thing of it was, he was not, it wasn't his time. It wasn't for 
uh, Peter to know all of these things, but Jesus understands and he knows every word of the scripture and he knows what has to take place even like we talked last Sunday about him dying on the cross and all the things that happened to him he foreknew all of those Amen. things that would happen to him he had no problem with it right he had no problem whatsoever and and and, and listen he knew what he was telling Peter here he said you can't go now it's not your time. And that's the same way with us this morning. We are appointed a time to die. Right. And yeah. then when we and that time comes, hey, we'll go. And right. I, I believe this morning that uh, we should be on watch. I believe that we should uh, understand I'm here for a little while and gone forever. You know what I'm saying? I'm here for, this, for a little while to fulfill what... God has planned for me to do. Amen. And listen, there's a soul out there, I believe, this morning for everyone that's in this church, even the children, if they grow up, that will be a witness. Uh, it's just like Brother Larry talked about uh, uh, our president now, whether or not he's a Christian, I don't know. But he did use some scripture. And, the, and, and we this morning, I believe we have people that, are, that we are appointed to go to and to speak to. And listen, if we don't, we're going to miss the reward. Right. We will, but let them listen. You, we need to stay in tune with God this morning. And we need to, when these dark places come, just say, well, Lord, uh, I'll just do what I can do. And I'll, I'll wait on you because, hey, there's a better day coming. Now, as we get on, and then here in verse 5, <clears throat> Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Amen. That is what he was going to do. He was going to prepare the way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. And so he says, this way that I'm fixing to let you that I'm fixing to prepare for you, this is the only way that you can get to the Father. This is the only, only way you can't get there by somebody else's uh, prayer. You can't get there by works. You can't get there by anything that you can do. But he says, I'm preparing that way. And he says here, <clears throat> he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, yeah, this is it. Now he says, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Now what was he saying? He said, you have seen the father. Because he said, if you have known me, you've known my father also. They are the same. And they're, 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 they're individuals. It's, they're the Godhead. And, and he says, to... Uh, uh, to uh, Thomas, he said, Thomas, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father also. Amen. And so here, here he says, uh, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. And Jesus said to him, Have you been so long time with you? Have I have have I been so long time with you, and yet have thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. And how shall thou then show us the Father? And how sayest thou then show us the Father? Why would you ask that, Philip? He's asking him. Why would you ask that? Because I am, when you see me, you've seen the Father, and you've seen the Holy Spirit, where there's three in one. Believest thou, in verse 10, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. So Jesus is explaining to him plainly what he is do, fixing to do and what he is, who he is, and what they've seen, and what he is doing. And he said, believe me, in verse 11, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, 
for or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, if you can't understand it no other way, look upon those that and I raised from the dead. Look at those that I healed. Look at the, uh, all the miracles that I performed for the work's sake, for Amen. what I've done. If nothing else, just believe it through that. And he said in verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And so here again, he's saying here about these greater works. People, you know, we sell God short. Mm -hmm. And so many times. You're right. We, we sit down and we pray for somebody uh, that's sick or whatever. Listen, we don't do it. We don't get close enough to God and we don't get close enough to Jesus. We don't get close enough to the Holy Spirit to really do what we have the uh, uh, ability to do. You're right. Because the Holy Spirit is living within us and that soul that is in us, that spirit is saved. And listen, he says here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Now, what did he do? You look at the works that Jesus Christ did. Amen. Uh, and, and, and we have that ability, but the thing of it is, our faith is so weak mm -hmm. that we never, we never use it, and we never use it for what it could be used for. And, but he, he tells us, hey, you can do that. Amen. Now, he says, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. In other words, He's going to He's going to leave us here, and we are capable of through the Holy Spirit doing these works and having some of these things done. Because He said, "You ask, ask what you will of Me, and I'll do it." Amen. And so we have this ability to do a whole lot more. And, and you talk about moving mountains. Uh, and I'm not talking about a big hill out here, but I'm talking about the mountains that gets in, in, in front of us and, 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 and by the side of us and troubles us from serving Him. We can move those mountains if we get close enough to the Lord. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something this morning that's precious because we have so many problems, even with those dark places I'm talking to you about. Even those old times when it don't seem like you can you can read God's word and get anything out of it. Listen, those are mountains that are blocking us Amen. from seeing God and from and, and understanding Him. And we can move those. We can we have the power if we'll if we'll have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We can do these things. And this is you say, oh well, it talks cheap. Yes, talks cheap. But I'm going to tell you something else. Grace was a lot cheaper. I'll tell you, God, grace was free. And this morning, if we have the grace of God in us and, and, and believe it, and that we can do these things, we can do it. Now, he says here, uh, if you ask, if ye, in verse 14, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And, and of course, the world jumps with joy when they see this. Oh, I'm going to get me a new car. I'm going to get me this. I'm get... No. But it's supposed to be read by an understanding Christian. Amen. The things he says here, if you ask anything in my name, well, listen, we don't need to be asking for this and for that as far as, as worldly things, and I know we need them. But he says this, he says, I'll take care of your needs, and he'll supply our needs. But listen, I believe he's talking about how that we serve the Lord and how close we can get to him. And when we sit down to read God's word or when we get up to sing a song or when we get up to do anything in his name, that we need to uh, ask his help in it. Amen. This is, this is what he's talking about here. And he says, and I will, in verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus has already told him here, he says, I'm leaving, I'm going. But here he says, I'll pray to the Father that he'll give you another comforter. So when Jesus left and when the disciples saw him leaving out, the comforter was come, was come down. The comforter being the Holy Ghost, the one this morning that lives within us, and this is the one that tells us, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to read your Bible. You've laid around all day and you haven't prayed. You've laid around all day and you haven't 
fed, been fed off of the Word of God. You need to do these things. And that, this morning, is some of, uh, some, of some problems that we have of being uh, lazy on uh, studying our Word, right. praying. And I know we can run by and say, uh, thank you, Lord, bless this and do that. But listen... When we get down to where we really understand that we're in the presence of God, and when we pray, and when we ask His blessings, and when we understand what we're saying, listen, that's when we're making contact with the Lord. Amen. But these little fly-by-night prayers that we do so much, hey, listen, they need to be pitched out the window and pushed over in a garbage can or somewhere and not use them no more. Amen. We need to, we need to get serious with the Lord. And here he says here again, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you till tomorrow or for the next day. No, but as long as you're upon this earth or forever, that's what he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. So there you go. Ye that are saved this morning have the spirit of the Holy Spirit in you. And he guides and directs you and he, and he speaks to your hearts. And a lot of times you have these thoughts about, oh, that's foolish. But think about these things. It could be the Holy Spirit, and it probably is, trying to teach you, trying to guide you, trying to lead you. And if you'll, if you'll pay attention to it and try to do these things, you'll find out who it is. Amen. Now, I know a lot of times this old flesh has crazy thoughts and all this, but I believe what the Spirit uh, has got a different sound from what this flesh has. Amen. And, uh, a lot of times I see these things, and I say, well, you know, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I want to watch television. And the Spirit says, why don't you read your Bible? Mm -hmm. And I, I know it ain't the flesh. <laughs> flesh hates it. Amen. Flesh hates me to go in there and start reading. But I know the Holy Spirit is talking to me and saying, hey, you need to study your Bible and uh, kind of get ready for, you know, uh, you got lessons to teach Sunday. Well, I may go in there and I may read something that that, don't, that the Lord don't lay on my heart. But the thing of it is, I did what the Holy Spirit asked me to do. It to read, read the Word. So uh, it's not all, every time, I mean, you know, when you go to the, when you go to the table, it's not always cake, uh, you know. You have to go there sometimes and uh, have a, a little skimpy something or another to get you back. But listen, every once in a great while you go there and there's a feast. Every once in a while you go there and it's just joy, joy, joy. Amen. And, uh, that gives you the desire to come back. But anyway, here again, uh, in verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he it, see, it seeth him not, that's the world, neither knoweth him, that's the world, but ye, those that are saved, know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you Amen. yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live ye shall also live so Amen. he's he's telling, telling Peter and them hey listen I'm going to be gone for a little while but I'm going to come back and I'm going to see you again and he says here uh, in verse 20 at that day you shall know that I am in the father and ye in me and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall love shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And so this morning, you've got a lover. You've got a lover. Amen. He loves you. He loves you, and he wants to. He wants you to live a good life. He wants you to serve him, but yet he sometimes knows that you fall uh, in, in your trials and temptations, but he still loves you. And he will, he will come to you and make himself known. And he will care for you. And 
He'll be with you forever. Amen. Because he says, uh, uh, And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. And Judas said unto him, not Esker, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Amen. So your lover said that he would come and make his abode with you. And you have that. Amen. You have that. Uh, we don't, you know, it may sound kind of silly, but listen, that's God's word. And he said that he would come and make his abode with you. And that means abode means to, to live with you, to stay with you, to be with you. And when t these times come that uh, it's so dark and all, just remember this, that, that he is living with you and he's in you and he, he's, he's, he's there ready to take, uh, take care of you and to take, take away your problems and help you with your problems. So, he says here uh, in verse 24, He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. And so, like I say again, those little things that go through your mind sometimes, it sounds so uh, foolish and uh, sometimes that you don't want to do, you need to listen to them. Mm -hmm. And you need to try to do this thing because I believe that it's the Holy Spirit speaking with you. And, and so he says in verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, Amen. neither let it be afraid. So this morning, that's our lesson. I hope that what we have read has been a blessing to you. I hope that it's drawn you a little bit closer to the Lord and uh, give you an, uh, uh, a desire to, to study more and to serve Him in a greater way. Thank you all for listening. Go ahead.